Stand with us this morning, if you would, please. Sounds great again, huh? I will bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. I will bless his holy name. And forget not all of his benefits, <laughs> who healeth all thy diseases, forgiveth all thine iniquities. I will bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. I will bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. He has done great things. He has done great things. He has done great things, bless his holy name. Help me with it again. Well, I will bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Yes, I will bless the Lord. I'll bless him, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Let's sing it like this now. For he's going to do great things for me. He's going to do great things for me. He's going to do great things. I bless his holy name. For I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier. Well, I got my fighting clothes in the army of the Lord. Said I got my fighting clothes in the army. I got my fighting clothes in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier. Well, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier. Well, I'm ready to die fighting in the army of the Lord. Yeah, I'm ready to die fighting in that army. I'm ready to die fighting in the army of the Lord. I'm ready to die fighting in his army. For I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. I'm a soldier. How many of you are soldiers this morning? Amen. 
Well, you better get ready for the battle of your life. I said I got my fighting clothes in the army of the Lord. I got my fighting clothes in the army. I got my fighting clothes in the army of the Lord. I got my fighting clothes in the army. Cause I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. A soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier. Amen. Give the Lord a hand and remain standing. We have our ushers come forth, and we're going to receive our morning tithe and morning offering. Well, I once was lost in sin, but my Jesus took me in. Then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It bathed my heart in love. He wrote my name above. Just a little talk, but Jesus made me whole. So let us have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. He'll hear our faintest cry. He'll answer by and by. When you feel a little proud, will turn him. You know there's a fire that's burning. Just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Well, I may have doubt and fears. My eyes be filled with tears. But Jesus is a friend who watches me day and night. I can go to him in prayer. He knows my every care. And just a little talk, Jesus makes it right. So let us have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. He'll hear our faintest cry. He said he'd answer by and by. When you feel a little prayer will turn in. You know there's a fire that's burning. Just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. It makes it all right. All right. All right. All right. Just a little talk. Jesus makes it right. Well, he makes it all right. All right. All right. All right. Just a little talk. Jesus makes it right. Amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise as you're seated this morning. Thank God for his spirit. Amen. Spirit keeps you moving. It keeps you going. You know those times when you don't feel like raising your hands? Times when you don't feel like blessing the Lord, praising his name? Listen, flesh is weak. Spirit is willing. Amen? That's where the praise comes from. Amen? This flesh would never want to do it. This flesh would never want to serve him. That's why the spirit way down deep with inside. Amen? That's what keeps you moving. That's how you serve him. Paul said you serve him with your spirit. You know why? Flesh would never do it. So thank God for those times, amen. I've had some of my greatest times and greatest breakthroughs with God going into prayer, times when I didn't feel like doing it, times when I didn't think anything was going to happen. I've been there. But I got in there and I started praying and started praising and started worshiping and some of the greatest revealings and some of the greatest blessings that I have ever got is when I started out maybe frustrated, didn't want to press through, but once I got to a certain point, I felt the Spirit. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Start taking over. Amen? That's what the Bible means, and that's what it's talking about. So we're going to 
do our praying at this time. Remember me, this morning not feeling too good. That's what I'm talking about. Thank God for his spirit. <clears throat> I feel like I've been hit by a truck. I don't know. He's, he's had strep throat. He might have passed it along. So uh, pray for me this morning. Uh, say, well, why are you up there glorifying the devil? I'm not glorifying the devil. I'm glorifying God who gave me the strength to get here. Amen? That's exactly what I'm doing. And uh, so please remember me this morning. Uh, continue to pray for Brother Danny and their family. Um, Brother Joe told us Thursday night, for those of you who wasn't here, they have started uh, his morphine. And uh, I guess he's gotten some bad pain. He said his shoulders and everything was hurting pretty good last week when we were over there to visit with him. So remember him and their family uh, this morning. Continue to pray with them. Uh, remember Brother Rob, he's with his mom. And uh, she, she's still hanging in there, but uh, says Sheila said she's very sick. And uh, she said time, she's still, still able to not- notice you and recognize you, who you are and everything. So uh, remember that this morning also. So who has something they want to bring before the church in prayer this morning? Ms. Gail. Amen. Always good. Yeah, give the Lord a hand of praise. Anybody else? Amen. As always, remember that. Amen. Remember that this morning when you pray also. Anybody else? Is that it? Come on. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Somebody say, well, what's the big deal? She's drinking milk. Well, if you would have known where she come from. Now, watching her running out around out here yesterday, just like any other little kid out there running around having having, having fun and, and getting in the moon bounce and stuff, and it, it makes me glad when I hear things like that. You know what? It, it, it's one thing to attack an adult, but for Satan to attack a child, now, that might not make you mad, but it does me. That just shows you what kind of person you're contending with. Somebody who has no regard for life, whether they're young or old, that, that's a baby, and he doesn't care. Amen? But I know somebody who does. Amen? And thank God for that testimony. You, you was getting with it, Sister Cheryl. I was going to tell you to preach this one. <laughs> you was getting, I was starting to feel something from that. <laughs> Amen. Hey, it's all the spirit, like we said a while ago. Anybody else before we pray? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 
Amen. I do too. Thank God for that. You know what? It's It's been very, very exciting of late. I, I can't wait to get here anymore. I uh, can't wait to see what God is going to do next. And you know what? I'm believing him to do something great again this morning. What is it? I don't know. There's one thing. You don't program God. Look, he's the architect of this. He's the first and the last, beginning and the end. You don't architect him. But if you can learn to follow him and listen for that voice, amen. A lot of voices, the Bible says, gone out into the world to deceive. But Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. And listen, I've said it a hundred times, a lot of times and most of the times, you're not going to hear the audible voice like you hear me talking this morning. Does he do it? Yes, he does it. But he'll speak to you in other things and in other ways. Amen. God is, is everywhere and in everything. A lot of times he'll, he'll lay something on your heart. He'll speak to your spirit. Amen. And you'll learn for, for, for new, new Christians, new converts, you'll learn to discern his voice from everything else. All right, anybody else before we pray this morning? Amen. You know what? Like I always say, things could have been worse. So thank God for the small things. Amen. Th things could have been a lot different this morning, but they weren't. Amen. And listen, I don't believe in chance. I believe in ordination. I believe that a good man's footsteps are ordered by the Lord. Why? Because that's what the Bible says. Amen. Anybody else? All right. Let's come gather around the altar if you can. If not, bow your head at your seats. The important thing is to pray and reverence the house of the Lord.
Amen. How many of you love the Lord this morning? Thank you, Jesse. I said, how many of you love the Lord and appreciate him this morning? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Before we read this morning, I was waiting for a message like this, and, and I got a few pictures that I want to put up this morning and before I read and try to explain a couple of things. Listen, a lot of folks don't understand just how easy of a way and how close that we can get to the Lord compared to the way that it used to be. And I think it's good every once in a while to take a look back and see the way it used to be and what God brought us from and where we are at today. Because he's really, really, and this is what I'm going to try to be preaching about this morning. The Lord gave me a thought over here the other night about open access and listen, I believe that a lot of us are living so far under our spiritual privileges that we have that he has afforded us this morning. And as they click it up, I want to go through a couple of pictures here. And what you're seeing right here, Moses' tabernacle. Now, Moses had gotten the Ten Commandments and everything from God, and he had a meeting with God, and God told him. He says, I'm going to give you instructions. I'm going to give you a pattern, and this is the way I want it built, and he went down through every detail, and you can read it. I believe it's in Exodus. You can read all the details on how God had this made. Now, what you see right up front here, those are the curtains, and that was the entranceway. Now, inside of those curtains is what we know as the inner court. And all around the outside is where Israel would set up their tents and their camp. And this is where God, listen, you had to come in through these curtains right here. And I'll get into the scriptures in a minute. And go ahead and hit the next one. Now, the building that you've seen all the way in the back, it was called the holy place. One time a year, one time a year. Can you imagine only coming into the Lord one time a year? That's where it was, but that's not where it is today. Now, behind these curtains there, the next one. Now, this right here, the Ark of the Covenant. Some of you may or may not, that's why we're doing this, understand what this is. Now, this is where the presence of God would appear. This is where the glory of God, and I feel him right now, this is where the glory of God would appear. It was called the Holy of Holies. Didn't get any holier than that. That is where God dwelt. That is where he would appear. One time a year, one priest would come in to this place. And he had to have the right garments on. He had to have everything done right. I'm not going to go through it all. But he had to go in prepared. He had to go in sanctified. Now give me the next one. This right here is a picture of what happened when Jesus died, the Bible says. And the veil of the temple was rent in twain. Now a lot of people hear that scripture and they don't understand what was really happening. Now, during this time right here, they're not in what we showed you in the first picture anymore. That was at the tabernacle out in the wilderness. This was the temple that had been built. Solomon built one. And David was going to build it, but God said, David, you're not going to do it. You've shed much blood. You're a bloody man. But your son Solomon is going to build the temple, and Solomon built a temple. Now listen, it wasn't like the first picture that we saw. You see, God used to dwell out there, but he had a place now, a temple, if you will, or a church. And that one lasted until Nebuchadnezzar came in and overthrew it. 
But God put it in another man's heart named Cyrus to have, and you can read it in, in Ezra and Nehemiah, to go and rebuild it again. We preached on it not too long ago. But one day Jesus was sitting around talking to the disciples, and the disciples were looking at that building. And they said, Lord, look at this building, the stones and everything, how, how beautiful it is. And Jesus said this to him. He said, you see this building that you're looking at? He said, I'm telling you, the days are coming to where not one stone that you're looking at will not be turned over and, and, and broken down. Not one is going to be left. And that happened not too long after Jesus had died, but the same thing that happened out in the wilderness and that tabernacle with the sacrifice and everything was the same thing that was going on in here. Now behind that big veil, that big curtain, and it was big, sat the Ark of the Covenant again, the place where God dwelt, the place where they would come once a year. And go ahead and click the next one. I'm going to read my, I'm going to read my verses now. I'm going to start in the book of Leviticus. I'm going to read chapter 1. Verses 1 through 5, and then we're going to turn over to the book of Hebrews for one verse. So the book of Leviticus, chapter 1. And these first five verses is to let us see what happened in that first picture that we showed you at the entrance and everything. This is what was going on. This is what, what had to happen. And it says, And the Lord called unto Moses and spake unto him out of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, If any man of you bring an offering unto the Lord, you shall bring your offering of the cattle, even of the herd and of the flock. In his, if his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male without blemish. He shall offer it of his own voluntary will at the door of the tabernacle, that big curtain that we first showed you there in the court. That's where they had to bring it. Of the congregation before the Lord. And he shall put his hand upon the head of the burnt offering, and it shall be accepted for him to make atonement for him. And he shall kill the bullock before the Lord, and the priest, Aaron's sons, shall bring the blood and sprinkle the blood round about the altar that is by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Now, we're going to read in the book of Hebrews. Chapter 10, verse 19. And it says this, Having therefore, brethren, boldness. And I like that word. There's a reason why the Bible says it. Boldness to enter into the holiest. What was the holiest? It was that far back place that we showed you where those priests came once a year. But the Bible talking here about boldness to enter in by the blood of Jesus. Can we say amen to his word? Listen to what it said, by the blood of Jesus. Not talking about a calf or a bull or a goat. Because you see, in those things, in those sacrifices, bringing them to the Lord, bringing them to the tabernacle, having to kill them and wring the blood out so the priests could take that blood so it would suffice God. Listen, they had to do that often. But one time out of the year, only one time, one priest could go back into the holy place and there offer sacrifice for the entire congregation, for all of the people. And you know what? 
That was a lot to go through. Get your own sacrifice. Bring it up. Kill it. That was a lot to do. That was a lot to go through to have your sin covered. I don't really think we understand. And I really don't think that we appreciate this morning how easy that God has made it for us right now. With everything that he has afforded us. Listen, back then that was the old covenant, the Old Testament. Now we are living in the new, the new covenant. Jesus said, this is the New Testament in my blood. There it is again. In the old way, you had to remember continually coming. It reminded you of your sin. I don't know about you, but I don't like it when Satan throws up sin and things that I used to be caught up in. He reminds you of your past. How many of you had him to do it to you? And in those sacrifices, it reminded them all the time of sin. Who wants to be who wants to have sinful things and sinful thoughts constantly running through your mind? But when Jesus came, and when Jesus done what he had to do, Listen, sin, sin condemns. Sin is a condemnation. But when Jesus was done, there is now therefore no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Are you in him this morning? Hallelujah. If you are, lift your hands up and wave them at the king this morning. I don't have to live under that condemnation. And listen, what, what anymore when Satan reminds me of my past and of my failures, and, and I have a lot of them, but when he does that, it doesn't bring me down anymore because I've been renewed, and I'm renewed daily in my mind, in my heart, in my spirit. I know that as far as the east is from the west, that God has removed my sins from me and the thoughts of those things. I don't live a prisoner. I don't live a slave anymore to Satan and his ways. But the Bible says he who the Son hath set free is free indeed. I'm a free man this morning. Hallelujah. I know where, I'm, where I've been. And more importantly, I know where I'm going this morning. Praise God. I'm going. Pray. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. A place where my soul is is never going to die. We talked about it yesterday amongst ourselves out here at the Fall Fest. One of the brethren said, Brother Micah, I wish during service when the power of God is moving one day during service, I wish the rapture would take place at that time. You and me both, brother, hallelujah, we're feeling the power of God. And when the trump sounds, we leave this world feeling the power of God and forever to be in his presence. If you love him, raise your hands and praise the king. Thank you, Lord. Notice the work that had to be done for a burnt offering or whatever it was. You had to go into your flock. We just read it. You had to bring the best one without blemish, a sacrifice. And listen, everything is foreshadowing Jesus. The best from the flock, the best that heaven had to offer without spot, without blemish, without wrinkle. Hallelujah. That's who we're talking about. But notice the work that they had to do. They had to go and they had to pick it out. They had to bring it. A lot of work just to bring that offering. Think about that for a second. 
Abraham one day took his son Isaac, and he was going up the mount to sacrifice his son Isaac. They had the wood. They had everything they needed. And Abraham, there were some fellows that traveled along with them. And Abraham told those fellows to stay put. He said, me and the boy is going up in this mountain to worship. And Abraham said, we will return again. Abraham, knowing good and well what he was going up there to do, sacrifice his son Isaac. When they got up there, I love this part. When they got up there, listen, the Bible says that the Old Testament is a schoolmaster to bring us to the new. Everything is foreshadowed in there. I mean everything. Jesus is foreshadowed in there. And I've read parts I believe, even believe the rapture is foreshadowed in there. And as they went, they got to the spot where Abraham was going to sacrifice his son Isaac. And Abraham spoke some prophetic words. Now listen. Whereas man used to have to bring their own sacrifice, pick it out, bring it, and, 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 and have its throat slit and the blood sprinkled. Man used to have to do the work under the old covenant, but under the new. And Abraham, I believe, prophesied this. Isaac said, Father, where is the sacrifice? Mm-mm-mm. You didn't have to bring it anymore, what's coming. You didn't have to pick out anymore and bring it to the door of the congregation and have it slaughtered. But Abraham prophesied this. He said, son, the Lord shall provide himself, my Lord and my God. The Lord shall provide himself a sacrifice. You're not going to have to bring it anymore. God's going to bring it. Hallelujah. I said God's going to bring it. He's going to provide himself the best. Hallelujah. The best that has ever been seen. And later he did that. Oh, hallelujah. As the Lord Jesus Christ was manifested in flesh and he come and dwelled amongst us and we beheld his glory, the only begotten of the Father, full of truth, full of grace and full of mercy and he provided the sacrifice once and for all and his name is Jesus the blood that he was shed back on Calvary's cross is still as powerful today as it was back then I don't have to go and get a sacrifice anymore when I mess up all I have to do is come to him and come unto him and say Lord I've sinned God I've messed up I don't have to bring it anymore you provided the sacrifice and listen when you call unto him he will answer I don't have to wait one time a year I can call unto him in the middle of the night I can call unto him in the middle of the day whenever I need to heaven is open and access is available to his people if you love him raise your hands and praise the king When Abraham had said that, he turned around. He heard a noise come behind, from behind him. Now think about this. Needed a sacrifice. He heard a noise and he turned around and there was a ram. Caught in the sticker bush, the thorns and the thistles. Caught there, couldn't get out. Another foreshadowing, listen. You know that stuff he was caught up in? His head was down in it. Look up here. Very same things. 
that he was caught up in? Right here. The same things that they put on the ultimate sacrifice. The man Jesus Christ. Look how God had that foreshadowed and laid out. My Lord, every detail. Why do we worry? Why do we get upset? God, don't you care what's happening to me? Lord, don't you know what's happening to me? I need this done by tomorrow. I need that done by next week. If he had a ram positioned and foreshadowed something that was going to happen thousands of years later, I think God is well able to provide for you this morning. It's his pleasure. It's his good pleasure to give unto his children. Are you his child? tonight. I'm a child of the king. Oh, yes, I am. Yes, I am. I said, I'm a child of the king this morning. Hallelujah. He's good to us. I said, he's good to us this morning. And he's made it to such a way right now. Listen. The new covenant is established on better promises, the Bible said. Better promises. Who's benefiting from that? You and I. You and I are benefiting from that. Now listen. He's made it so easy to have access. There is so much power available to the church. So much powerful and, and, and blessings available to you this morning that there shouldn't be any sick running around. Amen, Brother Mike. There shouldn't be anybody hobbling around. Listen, folks back in, in, in the day after Jesus was crucified, listen, they had such a hunger. Peter and Paul and all those boys knew what they had. And folks were so hungry, and they knew that those men of God had something with him. They were so hungry, and they had such belief and such faith that they would position themselves. If I can just have the shadow from the man of God pass over me, you're not hearing what I'm saying better promises, open access. That could be you this morning. That could be the, me this morning. Oh, don't it make you hunger, and don't it make you thirst for the things of God. I can't wait to get back in the house of God again. Listen, hallelujah, there is no veil anymore. I said there is no veil anymore. I have open access. I don't have to wait one time a year. You're not hearing me. You don't have to wait one time a year. All of heaven, hallelujah, when a child of God cries out, and a child of God praise. I believe all of heaven stands at attention. My Lord and my God, I'm about to have a fit up here. Oh, if you could only understand what he has provided for you today, you would do great things. You wouldn't miss another service. You wouldn't miss another prayer time. Oh, hallelujah. But you'd make room. You'd make way for more. And I would to God, the people would say, Lord, more of you and less of this world. Listen, there's a lot of devil-possessed folks that are walking around today. Oh, I would to God that we'd have some God-possessed people all walking around in the church and outside in the streets. I don't know about you, but I want to get possessed with God. Oh, you say, Brother Mike, you're off your rocker this one. That's what it's going to take. I said, that's what it's going to take to see things change and to see God come and to see God move. Not Nothing else matters here in this life. Nothing else matters in life. I made my mind up. I said I made my mind up. I don't care what I look like. Don't care what it sounds like. I want to beat down. I want to break down. 
I said, I want to tear down the strongholds of Satan. I don't want people walking in here bound and walking out the same way, but I want them when they come in, I want them to know that there is a God whose presence dwells here. There is no veil anymore. You've got open access. You may have walked in chain, but you can walk out loose. I said you can walk out loose by the power of God. Lift your hands and magnify the king. How close do you want to get to him? How real do you want him to be to you? How much of God do you really want to get? Now listen, I showed you that picture. The very first one. The inner court. Now I know that regular people couldn't go into the holiest of holies. I know that. But when Jesus died, and that's why we showed you that other one so you could get a clear picture of it. Do you see how big that thing was? They estimate between 40 to 60 feet and several inches thick. When Jesus died, the Bible says that thing was tore from top to bottom, and there's a reason. Tore from top to bottom. Now, what was back in there? The ark was back in there. Well, I thought only one time a year and it had to be a priest. It did. But when Jesus died, he fulfilled all of that. Mm -hmm. Guess what? I don't have to wait one time a year anymore. I don't need an earthly high priest to go into the holiest of holies for me. When that thing was ripped, when it was tore down the middle, guess what? Open access. Oh, my Lord. All the power and glory and splendor of heaven, everything that God has to offer, praise God, is available to you. I said it's available to you. You don't have to walk around defeated. You don't have to walk around with your head dragging. My Lord, I don't have to bring my own sacrifice. I don't have to wait one time a year. He tore it in two when he died. That means if I got a problem, guess what? I walk right up with boldness. That scripture said boldness. Oh, confidence, guess what I can do? I can sit down in the holies of holies and I can cry out, listen, it's not an earthly high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of your infirmity, but listen, he knows when you're hurting. He knows what it's all about. Hallelujah. And you can walk right in. How close do you want to get to him? How much of God do you really want this morning? And I said all that to say this. As easy and as open as the Lord has made it in this hour. Sadly enough, most folks will continue to walk around in the outer court and never enter in to the holiest of holy. Satisfied with what we have. Keep on playing in the outer court. Keep on dwelling in the outer court. I want to be right in the fire with them. Mm -mm -mm. I want to be right in the midst with them. Oh, hallelujah. Like the three Hebrew boys, they was in that fire, and the fourth man was in there. Listen, I'll stay in the fire if Jesus is in it. You ain't hearing me this morning. I'll stay in that furnace as long as he's in it. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I will stay in there as long as Jesus is in the midst. But you're not going to find it in the inner court. You're not going to find it in the inner court. Some folks are happy and content. Listen, how many of you in here this morning are saved? Let me see your hand. Throw it up. 
Don't be ashamed. Hold it up there. My Lord, your name's written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. That means you're not going to hell. Listen, if we're in this thing, we ought to do it 100%. We ought to want to get just as close to him as we possibly can. To have just as much as we possibly can. And here is the thing. As close as you get. And as you draw nigh to him, the Bible says he'll draw nigh to you. He made a way. He opened, accessed it. But you've got to make the first move. Draw nigh to God, and he'll draw nigh to you. And as much as he has done, as much as he has blessed us with, the blessings of the Lord, when I, when I stop and think about all that he's done for me and where he's brought me from, what he's done for, for folks in here, how could we not want to draw closer to the king? And as close as you get, you may think you've, you've got a pretty good relationship, but as close as you get, there will still always be room. Why you say that, Brother Mike? Because there is no beginning and there is no end. You hear what? There is no end with him. So that means you can draw just as close and get just as close to him as you want, my Lord. Oh, God, let that sink down in this morning. Nothing else matters, folks. Nothing else matters in this life. Accept your walk, your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And as long as I have breath in my body, as long as I'm able, I'll lift up my voice and I'll say he is the king. He is the way. He is the only way. There is not another way. They're preaching different ways, preaching different avenues. But if you make and if you get there, you're going to have to go the way of the cross. You're going to have to go the way. And he said, I am the way. When I died, I gave you open access to all that heaven has to offer. I gave you open access. Would to God we would have people today that the anointing and the power just flowed from. I can remember two distinct times to when I literally saw and literally right there in front of me in my own life had the power of God instantly do something for me, instant manifestation. It's too late to tell me that it's not real. It's too late to tell me there's nothing to it. Folks on the outer court believe that stuff. But thank God for some folks who went into the inner and they dwelt there. They set up camp there. Yes, sir. I remember one time I was little. I remember walking around out here with no shoes on. And it was a long time ago. And I got stung by a bee. Maybe a couple of them, but all I know is my legs, my ankle, everything swelled up. I guess I was allergic to them. Remember it. 
And mom took me and had Brother Huffman pray for me. And when he did, that swelling, I remember, I remember looking at it. As soon as he did, put his hands on the swelling, just, just left. Why? Because somebody was in the inner court. Come on now. That's what I'm talking about. Somebody recognized the veil was ripped. They set up camp. I'm not satisfied on the outer courts. Oh, a day in thy courts, David said. A day in thy court is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Remember another time I was about 13 years old. I'd broken my right ankle. And they'd done x-rays, and at the time, they didn't see it. When I got home, they called and told me that it was broken. And later that night, I believe, I actually, I spent the night at Aunt Nunny's house. We had church that Thursday, and I remember it. And I come in, I was sitting somewhere along through here, and Brother Paul was Thursday night, nothing really happening. He said, does anybody need any prayer? So I grabbed a hold of this one. I hobbled up like this. thing was broke. I hobbled up like this. I remember it. Never forget it. And I stood right here. Remember it. Right here. I remember the pile knelt down, and I had never now. I saw what happened with the other thing, but I didn't feel it. And this time I felt something. When he touched my ankle, I felt a heat. Radiant heat began to turn over in that foot. And I thought, man, what in the world is going on? When he was done praying, we used to go outside and run around here after church. All the kids go outside and run around. And I took a step and said, man, something feels different. I know this thing was broke when I came up here. Guess what? I didn't have to hobble back like this. I ran down those steps ran out in that, in that grass and ran around with the rest of the kids. Why? Because somebody went into the inner court. Somebody went into the holy place, got alone with God. You're not hearing me this morning. I'm not satisfied. Thank God for the outer, but thank God for the inner. You're not hearing me this morning. Open access. I hope this is getting you hungry. Say, more of you, God, and less of everything else. More of you, Lord, and less of this world. Lord, less of the gossip, less of the tales, less of everything. That's the stuff that Satan throws at you to get you hung up somewhere in right field so that you can't enter in into the holy place. But if you put that stuff aside and say, God, I'm going to serve you no matter if anybody else does, I'm making my way. I'm marching in. Oh, hallelujah. With all boldness, I'm coming in to the holy place. I'm going to set up camp there. I'm I'm going to dwell there, and I want to see the good things that God has prepared for me. Hallelujah. Stand this morning, if you would. Do you love him this morning? I said, do you, love, do you really appreciate him this morning? I hope this morning that we were able to show you something. To realize, listen, they had to do a lot of work back then. And they still couldn't enter in. He done all the work for you so you can enter in. Somebody sent me a link last night and I came over here and we was getting ready for church and Sabrina was doing this stuff. And I started feeling bad and I watched some of it. This man was preaching he said the Lord would give him a word about this coming year. And funny how the Lord does things. Funny how God times things, isn't it? And I'd made up my mind. 
that I'm not satisfied with where I'm at. He went on to say about how this year people are going to start getting unsatisfied with where they're at. And they're going to start doing things, taking preparations to press on this year and get closer to God than they ever had. Listen, it's time. It's time. He's been too good to us. He's blessed us too much. And there are some good things that are coming. I'm not talking about the church. I'm talking about us here. I'm talking about Stephanie Faith Center and everybody that comes through those doors. Listen, there are good things, blessings that he has for you, blessings that he has for me. We've had things hit us and things come against us where we didn't know if we were going to make it or not. Didn't know if we'd make it to see the light of day. I've had it myself, but the way I've been feeling lately and the way God's been visiting us here lately, it makes me hunger for more. It makes me thirst for more. And there's not anything that you or I are going through this morning. You should have all confidence to come boldly by the blood of the Lord Jesus, because it's been torn. You have open access this morning. Bow your heads with me this morning. Dear God, we've delivered exactly as you would have us to do it this morning. Lord, I pray that the people would see and know and understand, Lord, that they have open access to you. Lord, that everything that they have need of, you have it in the palm of your hand. Lord, this morning, as every head's bowed and every eye closed, if you're here this morning and you've never made your way into that holy place, the blood is there as a sacrifice for you, and it remains till this day, till this hour. Listen, if you're unsaved this morning, he's done all the work for you. The only thing you have to do is walk down that aisle. Come on now. Walk down that aisle. Meet me at this altar. And we're going to pray, and we're going to get things right. And with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're unsaved this morning, I ask you to slip your hand up and take it back down real quick. Anybody anywhere? Anybody anywhere real quick? Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thankful for that. If anybody needs prayer this morning, I'm going to ask you to come up. We'll pray with you. If you have a need, doesn't matter what it is. Come forth and we're going to pray for you. If not, sing that song and let's worship the Lord for a few more minutes. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Don't that sound good? What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me White as snow, there's no other sound I want to know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can 
for sin atones, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not of good that I have done, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Singing, oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. There's no other that I want to know, nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. Give the Lord a hand this morning. Well, we made it through it. My throat don't feel too good right now. <clears throat> feel a little weak, but guess what? He got it. He got us through it. Amen. Amen. Got us from point A to point B. So don't forget. Somebody will meet you next door. There's a lot of stuff still left over. We want to try to sell it and get rid of it. And uh, go by go by there and stop by, and somebody will be over there to meet you. A lot of good stuff still left over there. So don't forget your services tonight, 6 o'clock. So let's bow our heads, and we'll dismiss in prayer this morning. Sister Farmer, would you pray, please? <clears throat>